we're plummeting over 200 degrees colder than any place on Earth, where physicists say a whole new world begins. Minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature of this liquid nitrogen. So much fun. Liquid nitrogen, folks. The ultimate in cold. Actually, nowhere near the ultimate in cold. Physicist Eric Cornell knows cold. Liquid nitrogen isn't even close. He and his colleagues won a Nobel Prize for using it to discover a new state of matter. Cornell says we're headed to a place so cold that someone had to invent a whole new thermometer just to get there. Yes, Kelvin, an entirely different one where zero really means something. The bottom, the very lowest temperature you can get to, we call it absolute zero. But this this has a zero on it, so check yeah. this out, check this out. Yeah, yeah. It went down to zero, and look, I've got an amplifier that goes up to 11. Doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> the Kelvin in the Kelvin scale is 19th century physicist Lord Kelvin, who wondered if temperature is a measure of atomic motion, with less and less the farther down you go, why not make zero the place where all motion would stop? He calculated that would happen at minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit, which he made zero on his scale. A real zero, an absolute zero. So in the Kelvin world, room temperature would be? It's about 300. And water freezes at? 273 Kelvin. And this liquid nitrogen? 77 Kelvin. The truth of the matter is, compared to where we're going, 77 Kelvin is positively balmy. In fact, as you get things colder and colder, that's actually when they start to get the most interesting. Indeed. To continue on, we'll need to shed our Fahrenheit scale and replace it with Lord Kelvin's. Then take a rapid plunge down to... Four Kelvin. Four Kelvin? where the bizarre property of superconductivity was first discovered. There's certain materials that when you get it really cold, weird things happen. Little did I know that the substance that would take us there really isn't bizarre at all. It's helium. It's really not that cold, that's the funny thing. But if we turn it into liquid, it's four Kelvin, so really cold. Melissa Gooch at the University of Houston is about to show me how when certain materials... Oh, this is a piece of lead. This is lead get super cold, they start behaving in ways once thought impossible. To do this, she lowers the lead into this tank of liquid helium to cool it to a temperature of seven degrees Kelvin. Looks like the temperature is plummeting in the warp core, Captain. If we keep cooling... That ordinary lump of lead in there undergoes a transformation. Is it, in fact, a superconductor? Yes. Wait, what is a superconductor? Or for that matter, what's a regular conductor? Conductors are materials that allow electricity to flow through, like copper. Most of the wiring in your house is copper. But copper has a problem when electricity flows through it. Electrons bump around, wasting energy as heat. That's called resistance. A superconductor has no resistance, zero so the current flows through it without wasting any energy. This is copper wire that we have in our house normally. And these are normal light bulbs. But Gooch is going to run much less power through them than normal. Okay, so we're at 12 volts. That's only a tenth of the voltage we use in our homes. It's not very bright. That's what we get from the copper wire. Watch what happens when we run the same 12 volts through the superconductor. From a dull glow, to full throttle, so you're getting a lot more out of your electricity. Getting a lot more out of it. Mm, you're wasting a lot less. Yes. Scaled up, that wasted energy just in the United States grid alone could power 14 New York cities every year. But that's just the start. Scientists have been working on harnessing the properties of superconductivity for much more exotic applications. Now I put the superconductor. Here at the University of Paris, Professor Alain Secuto showed me something extraordinary that happens when a really cold superconductor meets an ordinary magnet. Oh, and there is levitation now, you know? And this little puck is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, come on. 
Let's do it. to the future! I'm actually surfing above the ground. I'm flying! And it's more than just fun and games. Engineers in Japan are already scaling it up to create the world's first superconductor maglev passenger train. It flies above its tracks at speeds up to 311 miles per hour. And it's cold that makes it happen. So what's the trick? You might think that the superconductor is acting just like a magnet. This is now a magnet? But you'd be wrong. It's not like a magnet, because here right. you have both repulsion and attraction. So these two disks have repulsion and attraction? Both. And that's not how a proper magnet behaves. It can't do both at the same time. The superconductor can, because it warps the magnetic field of the magnet to a point where it attracts and repels at the same time. It's both directions. It's, yes, it's, it's the watch. But how is this possible? How do superconductors actually work? Look at that. The crazy part is scientists don't really know. It has something to do with that Q word. 